So here we have the nucleus of perhaps a larger atom. And what we can think about maybe is the mass of the protons and the neutrons inside it. Now, the exact mass of a proton and a neutron are slightly different. And if we record this in kilograms, we find that a proton has a mass of about 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and a neutron is slightly heavier. Now, um, what we also have is maybe an electron. And if you have an electron, the mass of one of these is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And that means it's about 2,000 times less massive. Okay. However, these are the rest masses um, of these particles inside. And what we can actually use is rather than kind of writing it out like this, we can actually shorten it to something called the atomic mass unit. Now, the atomic mass unit has a symbol U, and 1U is about 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And effectively, what we can say is that a proton has a mass of about uh, 1U, a neutron has a mass of about one unit, and an electron has a mass of about a two thousandth of one of these uh, atomic mass units. And that's one way to, that we can actually think about the mass of different parts of uh, an atom. The other thing that we can consider is actually the size of this. You know, what's the diameter of a nucleus? Well, um, and this is some work that Rutherford did. They found that the actual uh, kind of the radius, or sorry, the diameter of a nucleus was about uh, 10 to the minus 15 metres. So, you know, pretty small. How big were the actual atoms themselves? Well, the actual size of an atom was about uh, 10 to the minus 10 metres. OK, so they're both very, very small numbers. But the thing is that the nucleus was about, uh, you know, uh, something times 10 to the 5 smaller. So if we were to represent a nucleus with a dot, which was a millimetre across, so here's... Uh, a dot, which is going to be my nucleus with the protons and neutrons in, and that's one millimetre. If I was to go and put the electrons out, and again, the electrons would be, you know, so small, they're kind of hardly there at all. The electrons would have to be 100 metres away. OK, so what we're looking at here is a very, very large distance between the proton, you know, between the nucleus and the atoms, OK? And every time you see a picture of them in the book, it's always going to be really, really simplified. So that does show that actually, you know, atoms are mostly empty space which is why they, when they did the alpha scattering experiment, they found that the majority of the electrons just went, so the majority of the alpha particles just went straight through it. Now, if we look at some kind of nucleus of, of pretty much any atom, what we can look at is the radius of that. And the radius of this is going to depend upon the total number of protons and neutrons inside it, which is uh, the nucleon number here. And what we find is that R is equal to R naught A to the third. Now this constant here, R0, is equal to 1.2 femtometers. Now a femtometer is just um, one of the prefixes which stands for times 10 to the minus 15, so a really small number. But that's because, you know, these nucleuses are tiny. Now why do we need to know that? Well, perhaps if we know the radius, we can maybe work out the volume, approximately, of one of these nuclei. And therefore what we could look at is the density, which is equal to the volume per unit mass. So we can work out the volume from uh, this kind of equation up here. And we can maybe calculate the mass from, again, we know the total number of nucleons and we know the, the mass per nucleon. And what this gives out, it gives us is the density. And the density of you know, pretty much all the elements is approximately something times 10 to the 17 kilograms per cubic metre. So if you had a metre of uh, a nucleus, so a metre by a metre by a metre, it would be incredibly, incredibly heavy. Alternatively, you could have something which is very small, perhaps something the size of this, which might, may, you know, which might contain hundreds and hundreds of tonnes of material. So that's a bit about nuclear density. What I'd like to look at next is a bit more about what actually is inside this.